Parshas Shalach has some of the most unbelievable insights that we can dive into and try to really look at expanding our mindset. Just a quick synopsis. What do we see happens? Basically, it seems to imply that Moses was told by God to send out spies that would go and check out the land of Israel. Out of the 12 spies that he chose, 10 of them essentially came back with uh, very scary reports. And then at the end, uh, and two of them came back reporting positive things, that it wasn't so bad, Yeshua and Kalev. Uh, and the Jewish people unfortunately followed the opinion of the 10, and they got you know, tremendously concerned. There's about a million and a half questions that kind of pop out when you think about this idea, right? Why, like, why were the spies so negative? What were they afraid of? Again, you have to realize like, the context of this whole thing. The Jewish people had just come out of Mitzrayim, right? It says that everyone had heard about, you know, had heard about the downfall of Mitzrayim and they were terrified and the Jewish people were, were, were flying high and they were about to go conquer their native land. And it's like, what, what's bad? Like, how do you, and the, and the biggest question that seems so completely preposterous is God has already showed you he's going to, you know, help you out. So even if you're going against the biggest nation in the world, which, which is nuts because Mitzrayim was the biggest, strongest nation and, the, and the, the seven nations of Canaan, they weren't so big, they weren't so scary. And the Jewish people had already seen success. It was like, what were they worried about? What was the concern? And also this, like, this profound idea, that according to multiple commentators, you know, that Moses was really trying to find the, you know, the, 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 the cream of the crop, the leaders of each one of the, each one of the tribes to go out and to, and to be the spies. It weren't, they weren't like, you know, lower, lower people. These were like, you know, these are big guys, right? These were, these were people that were, were men of status. So how could they have messed up so badly? How could they be such great leaders in, in the desert, but then all of a sudden have this, this complete change of heart and really derail the whole process? You know, everyone says this is one of the most tragic events in, in the Jewish, Jewish people's history, where essentially we completely lost our way and we sort of gave up on our national mission. And it was, it was a real nightmare. So how, how does this whole thing happen? So it's amazing, it's fascinating to recognize a couple different insights. Step number one, step number one, what were the slave, uh, what, were the, what, were the, what were the men that went out to look into the, the land of Israel and all the potential that God had been promising our ancestors now for thousands of years? Like what were, what were they so concerned about? There's a very deep idea that what they were really afraid of was the successful conquest of the land of Israel. What does that mean? And why is that relevant? So basically the Jewish people were how they were and they were hanging out in the desert. They were learning Torah. They were surrounded by the Shekhinah, right? There was this tremendous experience of spirituality. And what would happen if they went to the land of Israel? Suddenly they would have to go to work and suddenly they would have to live in the land and live in a world that was primarily physically based. And they were concerned about what it was going to be like, that they were going to have to give up their elevated spiritual status in the land, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the desert, right? Once they sell the land of Israel, well, that, that would be, that would be crazy. They actually have to fight a real war. Like they were completely being supported by God. If you could think about that concept, what that must be like. And they were afraid that they were going to have to go in and be involved in the physical world and what that was going to mean for their spirituality. So they didn't want to be successful because success would, so to speak, mean pulling away from this environment. Now, the amazing thing is that so many people nowadays in the world are trying to leave their, their environment and to go find spirituality elsewhere, right? There's, you know, in America, all over, all over the world, people are going on like these spiritual retreats and, and having these like elevated experience. And then, of course, there's this huge crash when you come back into reality because it's like, oh, man, I know there's so much more out there and how am I living this life? And it causes this whole like strain and stress. And the amazing thing is that God is telling our ancestors, right? God is saying, no, the point is not to be removed from the world and having the spiritual connection. Yes, obviously you need this rehabilitation point, which we're gonna jump into in one second. You need this point of rehabilitation whereby you can go from slaves and to become free people. But ultimately the goal as a free person is to live with this spiritual meaning in the world, in the physical world, right? Don't leave the world and then have your experience, but go back into the, go live in reality and farm and fight as a soldier conquering the land of Israel and, and, and be a father and be a husband and be, you know, all of these things which seem so, quote, trivial that we might think to ourselves and that society around us is telling us to escape. That's the place where you can bring spirituality in. That's the great concept. So they were afraid the, 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 
the, the Miraglim, the spies were afraid of this idea of success, what that would mean. Secondly, secondly, and what's amazing is that they were afraid of growth. They were afraid of this process. It wasn't quite time. You see this interesting idea that when God leads, leads the Jewish people out of Egypt, he brought them out in a circuitous route because as, as Rashi tells us, that maybe they would see a war, the Pelishtim, and they would, they would go crazy and they'd be terrified. They'd want to go back to Egypt. And amazingly enough, that's what their response was to, 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 to what they experienced when they were sent out the spies. Spies came back and said, we got to find someone who's going to bring us back to Egypt. We got to get out of here. This is terrible. This is exactly what God thought would happen. So you see this unbelievable concept over here that the transition, there is such a thing called, it takes time to transition. And so much of our lives, so many times we want that like moment. We want that breakthrough. We want that moment that's going to change us forever. And we might have insights that change us forever, but the process itself is a slow and painful and difficult process. And that's the way it is. And Judaism doesn't have these moments of breakthrough. And you see that even when God is leading us, again, could God change our minds momentarily? Could God make us free people out of slaves momentarily? Sure. Well, that's not what he does, right? Ultimately, what we're trying to do is develop into people. And so the experience of potentially losing, you know, of going from enslaved and going to being following God and to being free people, that's very scary. They didn't want that, that, that growth. They couldn't make that jump. And finally, and in, in my thought, the most profound, this crazy concept, uh, there's a famous book called Mindset by Carol Dweck, who's a Stanford psychologist. And she speaks about there's two ways to you know, raise children. There's a called a fixed mindset and a growth mindset. The fixed mindset, and she says this is really implanted into us as children. The fixed mindset is when we are identified as successful based on kind of who we are. You're smart. You are successful. You are good at sports. You are X, Y, and Z. And the growth mindset is when we, our parents reward us for the effort that we put in, which again is a, is a, is a Jewish concept very much so, that God rewards us for the effort, not necessarily for who we are, right? But this amazing idea, if you look, the 10, the 10 Miragla, the 10 spies that ended up um, that ended up saying all the negative reports about the land of Israel. So all of them were men of status. That's what we know about them, that they were all men of status. But the amazing thing is, who are the other two that said no, that said that the land of Israel will be fine, they didn't go the peer pressure. Again, imagine, imagine being able to stand up to peer pressure when 10 of your contemporaries are saying, you know, the land is bad, and then two people are standing up and saying, no, no, no you know, it's going to be okay. So the amazing thing is Kalev comes from Yehuda. And Yehuda was the, was the Shevet, was, the, was, was our forefather that represents tshuva and represents admitting when you make mistakes and is willing to kind of go back and to say, I, I messed up and I'm going to try it again. So he comes from that line that his family ancestral heritage is not being fixed. We have to grow, right? And the, and the other one, right, Yoshua, what happened? We know that Moshe Rabbeinu gave him a new name before he went out. So again, what his whole identity was kind of thrown up. So the idea is, if you look at this amazing character development between the different leaders and how they responded, two of them had a growth mindset. They said, okay, you know, look, we, we can grow. You know, the, new, the, the effort is what's important. The, 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 the fear of, of not being successful does not really fit into our equation. Why? Because we know, how to, we, we know we'll just kind of rise the occasion, right? On the other side, they were afraid of losing everything because they were afraid of losing their identity because their identity was tied up part and parcel of who they were. They didn't see themselves as a project to work on, but rather they saw themselves as we are men of great stature. And as a result, they were afraid to turn their minds off and to potentially go into an area of unknown. So the fascinating thing is when it comes to success and it comes to growth and it comes to breakthrough, kind of all of those things are not necessarily great from a Jewish perspective. We can't be afraid of success. We can't be afraid of what it's going to look like when we get on the other side, because we don't know in a lot of cases. We have to be willing to push ourselves and to go where God pushes us and to have the faith that whatever he puts us into, right, that whatever situation we're into, even if it's different, even if we perceive it as not being as spiritually elevated as, as we had thought it would be, the idea of, you know, going out and working with people as opposed to staying in a, a safe confines of a, of a spiritually uplifted environment. Like, if you look, that, that, that's a crazy concept. But having faith to go where God God pushes you and God guarantees you success and not being afraid of what that looks like and then seeing yourself as a growth 
process. It's a part as, as going through a process of not having that instantaneous breakthrough, but rather having to have the patience to kind of go the distance. And finally, to have that mindset that I'm becoming, I'm not, am I, as I heard, I think it's a Rabbi, uh, Rabbi David Aaron says, you know, I'm not a human being, I'm a human becoming, that I'm in this process of growth and development, and I'm not set to where I, where I am. Shabbat shalom.